Okay, well, here's a bit of a bit of fun. Do we need to reform the House of Lords? Whew. Okay, well, look, first let's get the mechanics out of the way. Uh, uh, to begin with, the, let's get the name right. It is the Right Honourable, the Lord Spiritual and Temporal of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in Parliament Assembled. Whew. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Okay, it seems to have uh, three jobs. First of all, it holds the government to account uh, through debates, uh, questions to ministers, uh, investigative committees, and so on. Second, it's a revising chamber. This is what it's most known for. It debates, amends, revises bills it receives from the House of Commons. And uh, both houses have to agree on the wording of any bill before it can be given royal assent and become law. And finally, it can initiate bills itself, except anything involving money. They can't do that. Okay, so this sounds good. Who could disagree with that? Well, as we shall see, many do. (laughs) Let's have a look. Okay, first of all, it's a bloated organism. It currently has 780 sitting members, many of whom show up only for their daily fee of 305 pounds. Uh, it's the only upper house of any parliament in the world to be larger than its lower house. And it's the second largest legislative camp chamber in the world behind the Chinese National People's Congress. Um, So that's some fairly heavyweight competition. (laughs) Well, also, it's undemocratic. Uh, We, the people, uh, have no say in its composition. Members are uh, drawn from the peerage, made up of lords spiritual and lords temporal. The lords spiritual are the 26 archbishops and bishops in the established Church of England. How anachronistic is that? Uh, Most lords temporal are life peers appointed by the monarch on the advice of the prime minister or the House of Lords Appointments Commission, but they also include 92 hereditary peers. Uh, It's basically a boys club. Even though 28% are women, there's no female hereditary peers. Not a good thing in the 21st century. Male primogeniture uh, guarantees this in that in that world, <laughs> and uh, we, alongside Iran and the Vatican City, are the only states that allow clerics to play a part in lawmaking. In a secular society, that that really is something, um, and it's amazing that it that it has continued this long. The first English parliament, the model parliament, the one in 1295, which included archbishops, bishops, abbots, earls, barons, representatives of the shires and boroughs, that showed the way. Uh, Too much of this uh, structure and its antiquated origins are still in place. Okay, well, that's kind of the case against... Uh, the House of Lords in uh, favoring its reform. How about those that say, no, we don't need to reform it? As, as a class, first of all, that inherited its estates from one generation and passed them on to the next, the Lords could claim to take a long view of public affairs immune to the winds of temporary opinion. Their wealth has made them more independent of the crown uh, than the commons and better placed to resist its power. They really are independent. Uh, That, of course, assumes that the crown does have power. I guess guess it's a bit of a throwback, that argument. Yet those who want to abolish the Lord should be careful what they wish for. In a country without a written constitution or a proportional electoral system, the Lords is one of the only real checks on a government that has a majority in the House of Commons. Uh, We have to remember that the uh, Prime Minister is both the head of a party, he's head of the executive branch of the government, and the head of the legislative branch of the government. So that's a pretty good argument. And it's beneficial. It it isn't usually involved in party politics. Laws can be scrutinized impartially without the uh, drama and hysterics of the House of Commons. And it also benefits from the wealth of experience held by some of its specialized, long-standing appointed members. Well, those are some pretty good arguments for leaving it as it is. What's my take? 
Well, here's what I think. The debate about the composition and the power of Lords has gone on almost nonstop for decades, even centuries. But achieving change given the existing power of the Lords has generally been stifled and mostly stopped. It does seem to work, but I'm afraid we must face up to the unpleasant reality that many hereditary peers are wealthy landowners who made their money from slavery, from empire exploitation, or from industrial success financed by slavery. These are not the sorts of people we should want influencing our nation and the rules by which we're governed. The life peers are similarly somewhat tainted by support because they're the people who are pushed by the incumbent party for their own reasons. And some have actually bought their positions. That's, by the way, that's illegal, but little is done about that. The solution is simple, elect them all. I admit that the thundering herd of voters sometimes gets it wrong, as in the case of Donald Trump. But the existing system is worse for all of the reasons noted above. Elect them all. Well, I hope you like that. I suspect most will, but uh, if you did, please give me a like, subscribe, uh, notify, comment, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.